Welcome to Neoden USA's instructional video on how to load a tape and reel into a feeder. In this video, we'll go over three key preparation steps, confirming the correct feeder size, understanding pitch settings, and labeling your feeders. Then we'll walk you through the entire loading process in six simple steps, from inserting the tape reel to securing the tape. Finally, we'll wrap up with tips on making any final adjustments. Before we get started, let's go over a few important points to ensure a smooth setup. First, make sure you're using the correct feeder size for your tape reel. Feeder sizes commonly range from 8 mm to 56 mm, and the feeder size should match the width of your tape reel. To measure the tape width, place a ruler across the tape like this. In this example, the tape width is 16 mm and should be loaded into a 16 mm feeder. In this tutorial, we're working with an 8 mm tape reel, so we'll use an 8 mm feeder. Next, let's talk about pitch. This refers to the spacing between each component on the tape. Most components are spaced in 4 mm increments, but very small components can sometimes have a 2 mm pitch. To ensure accurate feeding, you need to set the correct pitch both on your feeder and in your machine software. To measure the pitch, place a ruler parallel to the tape. Align the zero mark with the center of one component and measure to the center of the next component. In this example, the pitch is 4 mm. Here, it is 8 mm. Alternatively, you can use sprocket holes to measure pitch. Notice the sprocket holes running alongside the components. These guide the feeder in advancing the tape correctly. By industry standard, the distance between sprocket holes is 4 mm. Since each hole is spaced 4 mm apart, we can determine the pitch by measuring from the midpoint of one pair of sprocket holes to the next. In this example, the center of the component falls halfway between two sprocket holes at the midpoint, right at the 2 mm point. From the midpoint of one pair of sprocket holes to the next is 8 mm, confirming the pitch. For an 8 mm feeder, like the one we're using in this video, the pitch is usually fixed at 4 mm, so we don't have to make any changes. However, larger feeders generally require adjustment. Finally, be sure to label each feeder with the component's footprint and value after installation to help keep your assembly process organized. Throughout this tutorial, I'll be referring to different parts of the feeder by name. This diagram can be used as a reference to understand what each part is called and where it's located. Now that you've confirmed your feeder size, determined the correct pitch, and labeled your feeder, go ahead and grab your tape reel and feeder and we'll go over each step. The first thing we're going to do is slide the tape reel into the feeder until it rests against the stopper. Just make sure the tape's direction of feed is positioned to move clockwise. Then we're going to pull both the carrier tape and cover tape forward towards the front opening of the tape guide frame. We want the tape to move easily through the opening, so now we need to open the tape guide frame. This is often easier to do with the back of the feeder facing you, so go ahead and turn your feeder around. With the locking handle raised, push up on the side of the tape guide frame with your thumb. While pushing this up, press down on the manual advance button until the tape guide frame pops open. Now that the tape can move freely through this opening, slide only the carrier tape under the front opening of the tape guide frame. Peel back the cover tape as needed without exposing any components. You'll want to slide the tape forward until the sprocket holes on the tape align with the gear spikes. If the tape gets stuck, you can twist or wiggle it side to side or up and down until it fits properly. Now grab the cover tape between your fingers and pull it toward the front opening of the tape guide frame. Slide it under the tape guide frame from the side, then pull it up through the open slot on top. Be sure the cover tape is not twisted. Once both tapes are positioned correctly, lower the frame back into place by pressing the manual advance button. With both tapes in place, we're going to advance the carrier tape forward by repeatedly pressing down on the manual advance button. While you're doing this, make sure to pull the cover tape taut as it shifts so it doesn't bunch up or slip out from under the tape guide frame. Continue advancing the tape until you have enough cover tape to go over both pulleys and the cover tape advancing wheels. For this step, we're going to lock the cover tape in place. To do this, pull the cover tape away from the tape guide frame and position it over the upper guide pulley. Then pull the cover tape down and over the lower guide pulley toward the cover tape advancing wheels. 
While holding the cover tape in place, use your other hand to push the idler wheel away from the drive wheel. Pull the cover tape down and position it flat against the drive wheel. Now lower the idler wheel back into place to lock the cover tape between the cover tape advancing wheels. You'll want to make some final adjustments by aligning the carrier tape using the manual advance button. This will make it easier and faster to install your feeders and program your machine. Advance the tape forward until the components in the tape are positioned just before the front opening of the tape guide frame. Don't advance the tape too far or you might lose a few components. Finally, don't forget to label your feeder. Write down the feeder number and the component's footprint and value for easy reference later in the process. And that's it. Your tape and reel is now properly loaded and your feeder is ready for use. Thanks for watching and happy assembling.